Hey guys, welcome back. Um, this is going to be part four of the bubbles restore. We're going to get this unclamped and get the first coat of um, the Bondo glass filler put on it. Um, let's see how this glue held up. Corners feel nice and stiff. I mean, picked the cabinet up by it, so I'd imagine that should be good. Okay, good. Staying together, it's not springing back apart, which is a really good sign. Okay. I'm happy with that. All right, so I'm gonna get some uh, Bondo glass and hardener, and we'll get some of that mixed up and put the first coat on the side over here. Okay, I got some on the board here, so we're gonna get this mixed up. want to fill this flush don't really want to mound it up too high if we don't have to and then when we sand it down we want to try not to uh, take it all off so that it spans that surface filling in uh, any of the voids in the plywood. This stuff's a lot harder to sand than Bondo, so try to put it on fairly smooth if you can. Now I'm going to put a little bit down here and then I'll get this side when I roll the cabinet over to the other side. That I'm going to leave a little bit mounded up. Okay, I'm going to let this dry. We'll come back, we'll sand it down, and then we'll be ready for a coat of uh, Bondo. Okay, let's start by sanding this lower one first. That just needs a little bit of filler. Nice 
my airline needs a new uh, O-ring in the fitting. up some bondo and we'll put a coat of that on. Now I'm going to spread up a lot farther on this coat than I did with the other one just so that I can kind of blend it in to the cabinet itself. smoother you spread it, the easier it is to sand.
Okay, I'm just gonna go around and put a little bit down there and then if I see any other little nicks, I'm gonna put it on that. Okay, while this is drying, I wanted to let you know that um, I'm putting all my videos on the playlists, all my restoration. So you'll be able to just click on like Qbert restoration and click on the playlist and it'll just continue from one video to the next. Uh, so I should have all those sorted out today. So it'll make it a little bit easier if uh, you guys want to watch the whole series on how something is restored. At least they'll all be in a row and they can keep playing and you can start and stop whenever you want. So I figured I'd let you know that real quick. I'm going to let this continue to dry for a little bit and then we'll knock this down. And long as this sands well and everything looks good, we'll flip the cabinet over and we'll do the other side. Okay, it's been sitting for a while, a little longer than normal. Got to get this sanded down. Um, and then we'll get it spun over and see what the other side's looking like. It doesn't look too bad from here. It looks like nothing is delaminating or anything because this was the leg that was missing and that one up there. So I think what happened is this corner took the brunt of the damage just from moving it and sliding it all over the place. I got to do a little bit of Bondo work back here too. But I'll do that when I flip it over because I got to mix up a little bit more of that Bondo glass. And I want to make sure I don't, I probably need a little bit for this corner and stuff down here. So let me knock down this with the block. Now on plywood cabinets, you can use your DA sander down the edges. And it usually doesn't chip it up, but it's just safe to not do that. Um, particle board cabinets, it definitely blows the corner off. So you don't want to do it on a particle board cabinet. So I'm going to take this block sander here. And we're just going to run it up and down the bottom here and straighten out this uh, mud that's hanging off the edge. Now we'll knock down the top. switch to my other sander real quick. And I'm going to get these other spots that I had done up these edges.
bite down here. Get into that corner a little bit. Okay, that's looking good. I'm going to take my little block sander here, and this is a real sharp edge. So I'm going to just take it on a 45 degree angle and just knock it down. Just for some reason, if that gets dragged on the ground again, it's not going to go ahead and rip a big hunk off. but it could happen. So let's switch to 180 grit. So we were using 80 grit. We're going to go to 180 and we're just going to smooth this out and then this side's done. We can get the cabinet flipped over and see what the other side looks like. my hand along it I don't feel anything ramping up on me it feels nice and flat so we are good on this side so now we're gonna roll it over and uh, I'll take a look at this other side see how this looks tell this side looks way better than the other side a little bit of chipping not a big deal we got to mix up some bondo glass anyways because we got some chips in the back i gotta fix fix this right here got to fill that in down there where that's messed up so let me uh i'm gonna sand this down with some 80 grit and then get some bondo glass and we'll come back we'll apply that let that dry for a little bit and they'll be ready for some uh, bondo okay let's mix up some more of this now on the bottom here, this isn't delaminating. There's a couple little voids because plywood always has voids in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread a thin coat of this down the whole bottom like I did on the other side. Mainly why I wanna do it is this stuff, <coughs> excuse me, has a, um, a fiberglass resin mixed in with this compound, with this uh, fiberglass strands and everything else. Now, when I spread a thin coat on the bottom of this uh, plywood, it's gonna kind of seal that edge from any future moisture getting in there. I knock on wood, never had moisture in my basement and I hope never to have it, but if for something were to happen, at least this old plywood would have a little bit of a seal on it to kind of help prevent it from uh, swelling up in the future. So we're gonna give it a just a little coat underneath. Got a little piece of plywood flaked out there. I mean, this little bit right here is missing, but that's not a big deal. It's solid. At least we don't have uh, like the other side where it was kind of flapping in the breeze. We don't have that issue on this side. The other side definitely took the brunt of the damage. But at least on this side, we don't really need a lot of this. This corner's not that bad either. Got real lucky. That cabinet's actually in pretty good shape, all things considering. I don't think that's, I think the Stargate cabinet's in, kind of in the shape that that other side was in. But I've had that Stargate for years, and I honestly 
don't really remember. The only thing I know that it is, is somebody put casters on it, so it rolls around real easy. We'll be converting that back to legs because I don't know if anybody, any of you guys have ever played a game with casters. It kind of sucks because it just starts rolling all over on you. Even if you lock it, they still seem to want to roll around on you. Um, I'm actually getting ready to go do a game pickup today. It's a newer game. Um, I'll just tell you guys what it is. I'm going to pick up a PGA Tour golf game. We have 2022 Golden Tee. And uh, we're big into playing golf games. We like it. So I figured it was a really good deal on it. Um, it has, a, I think, a 27-inch CRT, which I'm gonna end up putting it in my empty bags cabinet once I convert my bags and Silver Strike Bowling to the same cabinet. I'm gonna have that extra slim cabinet. So I'm gonna put it in there with that 32-inch LCD and uh, probably just sell the cabinet that it came in. It's in a golden tea cabinet and it has, the monitor looks beautiful, the picture. So it's gonna be a real nice 27 inch flat screen CRT for somebody if they're interested. It might be a 25, I'm not sure. But I'm getting ready to go get that. I'll let this sit while I'm gone. Then I'll come back and finish up the body work on this video. So there we go with that. So we're gonna let this dry now because this stuff takes about an hour to dry, thoroughly dry. Bondo dries in 15, 20 minutes. You know what else we gotta do is we gotta cut those grooves in the team mold for the team molding. But I'll let this dry, I'll go grab that game. It's about an hour and 20 minutes each way, so it's gonna take me a couple hours, and I'll come back and we'll finish up the body work on this and we'll be ready to uh, spot primer the areas that we're doing the body work on. So, all right guys, um, I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right guys, I'm back um, from my uh, trip. It's actually the next day. Um, I got a little wrapped up and busy doing other things, so I didn't get a chance to finish this yesterday. So I want to get this uh, body work finished on this today and maybe spray some spot primer, some areas that need it. Just the, just going to primer the um, areas that I'm doing the body work on. So I've got my 80 grit set back up on here. We're going to sand down this um, Bondo glass and then um, put a coat of Bondo on this and then... Uh, I think there's only a couple little nicks and then I got to check that. I got to do that back piece there and I got to check the front to make sure that doesn't have a lot of um, imperfections. So let me uh, sand this real quick. Got to turn the air on. spot right here that's delaminated right here I'm gonna cut it back with my knife get rid of that so that when I bondo it it doesn't pop through in the future the rest of it all looks good I nearly sanded almost all of it off I gotta get this spot down here real quick which I'll do that off camera. I'm gonna do that other inside piece. And then I'm going to put a coat of Bondo on here and then we'll come back. But I got those two spots that were delaminating. Everything else along that edge looks good. So I'll get that done. I'll get a coat of Bondo on this. And then once it sets up, I'll come back. All right, let's get this sanded down.
All right, now I'm gonna take my block sander, sand this bottom edge, like we did on the other side. Bevel that edge so it doesn't chip. All right, I'm going to get these last couple spots. Um, there was a little bit of chipping along the back here, but other than that, I filled that in down there. I got to sand that. And I have this one spot over here, which is just about smooth. I just got to do that. So I'm going to get all these sanded down. Then we'll put the leg levelers on it. We'll get it stood up so that we can do some spot primering on those spots that we body worked. And then that'll be it. Okay, while that little bit of filler is drying, the couple spots I found, let's recut this side's T-molding. And then when I flip the cabinet over, we can do the other side. I have the slot cutting bit installed. We just need to set it to the right depth. So we gotta come down a little bit. That looks good there. Lock it in. We wanna go counterclockwise. So we're gonna be going towards the bottom of the cabinet. got that side cut then we'll cut the other side when I get a chance to flip it over while I'm waiting for this filler to dry it's almost dry a little bit sticky still let's screw on these leg levelers get those on let's see where I put them I think I put them over here because I definitely don't want to stand this cabinet up without having these on there because then We'll be right back in the same situation we were in with the wood all falling apart on us. Now I'm going to try to just eyeball these so that they're about the same. I mean, adjust it afterwards, not a big deal. These ones I bought on Amazon actually, rather than um, like the arcade shops or eBay. They have a nice nylon bottom on them. That looks pretty good there. Okay, we'll let those, um, I'll get these other spots sanded down, then we'll spin the cabinet over and cut the other groove. Okay, I got it all sanded, so now I'm gonna rotate it around and we'll get that other groove cut. rotating it all the way around. Once again, we want to go counterclockwise. Now this side, that side I just had to clean the groove. This side I got to cut a whole groove. And the funny thing is, is uh, from that side to this side, it's a little bit different. So that's something you guys want to check when you're doing your cabinets to make sure that one side's the same as the other. If they could have been a 30 second off, and on that side, if they maybe routered it from this direction, you know what I mean, and vice versa, it could be off a little bit. Uh, this thing's playing games with me. This thing's got a short in it somewhere, and it doesn't want to turn on sometimes. I need to take it apart. Let me see if I can get this working real quick. All right. That's it. That groove is cut. 
So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this blown off, get it in the spray booth, and then we'll spray a little primer on it, and then that'll be the end of part four. Okay, let's mix up some 2K primer. Um, just gonna mix up a little bit, we don't need a lot. We just gotta get those spots that are bare. Um, I'm gonna let that stir up for another minute. I'm gonna go grab a piece of cardboard so I can cover up the areas of the artwork when I get close to it so I don't get overspray on it. Okay, we're gonna use the primer that I always use, the Summit Racing 2K Urethane Primer. It's a four to one mix, so we're gonna put some reducer in it. Hopefully my uh, spray gun's cleaned out good. When I was primering that car, I didn't clean it out real good and it kept clogging on me. So hopefully I won't have that problem today. probably two coats on or so just so it's got a good coverage and then we'll let it set for a day or two and then it'll be ready for sanding and paint work once it's painted it's going to go in the basement we'll let it sit down there for a little bit or maybe I just finish it and then we start on Stargate I'm not sure yet I'm not sure what I want to do maybe we'll finish this one and then start on Stargate um, I am just going to run that uh, board from Arcade Shop for now, the multi-Williams board, because I do not have an original board. Um, but I, oh, you know what, I'm waiting on the harness from uh, Golden Age Arcade, because I ordered a new harness for it, and then I figured I'm just going to use a JAMA adapter from the factory harness. And uh, go that method so that if I ever find an original board for a reasonable price, I could put that in there. I found one the other day, a board set. I don't know if it was all the boards or not, but it was almost $700. I thought that was a little high. I'm just going to wear my paper mask for this time because there's not a lot of primer going on. And uh, there's not a lot of overspray in there anyways for this. So I'm going to go get set up. And we'll put a couple coats of primer on this cabinet. Oh, forgot to take the screen off. On this filler primer, if you don't take the screen off, you uh, end up clogging it right away. The screens on these are real fine. the camera going we'll just head right out there now
noticed I have a real tight spray pattern. I turned the gun in so that it wouldn't do a big wide pattern and have a bunch of overspray going everywhere. So I have it in a tight pattern to keep it so it doesn't uh, have too much overspray.
and then we'll touch up the artwork, put the black paint on it. And then uh, if you're wondering what all the white stuff is on the black paint, that's alcohol from when it dripped off the side. Um, it didn't hurt the paint at all, it just stained it white a little bit, so I'll sand that down. I'm repainting that black anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, so, alright guys, it's going to end part four. If you're liking what you're seeing, please like, subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Other than that, I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to work on the car, and it'll be a car video. And I'm probably going to do a quick video tonight of my pickup from yesterday. So, alright guys, I will see you later.